Maintaining a sterile environment in the operating room is essential to prevent surgical site infections and requires all surgical instruments and medical devices to be sterile prior to use. Sterilization packaging systems, such as disposable wrap and rigid containers, are intended to enclose and maintain the sterility of surgical instrumentation. Rigid containers are designed to allow penetration of high temperature steam through vents or valves in the container, sterilizing the items inside. Typically, a filter allows the steam to pass through during sterilization while keeping contaminating particles out. In some cases, valves are used instead of filters. The valves must open and close properly in order to allow sterilization to occur, yet prevent contamination. For rigid containers to maintain a barrier against airborne bacteria, all of the mechanical parts must work properly and perform as intended. For example, a properly sealed junction between the top and bottom of a rigid container is required to prevent the penetration of airborne bacteria. However, damage, misuse, or poor construction can create breaches in the barrier where bacteria can enter. When the top and bottom do not achieve a proper seal because of dents, gasket damage, or other causes, gaps can be created, providing an entryway for airborne contaminants. Another crucial component for rigid container performance is the filter. When working properly, the filter is held in place by a retention plate, sealing the filter to the rigid container surface. If a proper seal is not created, airborne contaminants can potentially get inside the rigid container. When using sterilization wrap, it must be handled according to Amy recommended practices and wrapped per the manufacturer's instructions in order to prevent tears and openings. The wrap itself acts as the filter, keeping particles out. Halyard Health Sterilization Wrap also has a proprietary technology called PowerGuard that embeds a charge in the material that captures small particles like airborne bacteria. In addition to being challenged with airborne contaminants, sterilization packaging systems experience air pressure changes in the hospital environment. These pressure changes cause air movement through the sterile package, challenging its barrier performance. Many events in a healthcare facility can potentially cause air exchanges, transportation in elevators, opening and closing of doors, stacking, bumps, and movement caused by transportation in the healthcare facility. An air exchange also occurs after packages are autoclaved. As the temperature cools, the air volume inside the container shrinks. When this happens, air is drawn inside the container to make sure the air pressure on the inside and outside are equal. Sterilization packaging systems must prevent penetration from airborne contaminants even when experiencing these dynamic air events. An independent laboratory, Applied Research Associates, or ARA, developed a test method that evaluates the performance of sterilization packaging systems. The ARA Biological Aerosol and Applied Microbiology Group has performed research on aerosol protection systems for over 10 years, working with many federal agencies. For this study, a dynamic biological aerosol test was developed. This custom designed test chamber allowed the sterilized rigid containers and wrapped instrument trays to be challenged with aerosolized bacteria while simultaneously experiencing pressure changes. The pressure changes simulate air exchanges typically found in a hospital environment. 111 rigid containers representing four major brands were obtained from 14 different hospitals in North America. Test containers were deemed to be in proper working order by the providing hospitals and currently in use by their facility. An assortment of rigid container designs were tested. Disposable and limited use reusable filters, containers using a valve technology, and containers with plastic or aluminum lids. For the purposes of this study, containers were classified based on use, unused, less than five years of use, and five to nine years of use. 
several grades of sterilization wrap provided by Halyard Health were evaluated. For each test, rigid containers and wrap trays were prepared in similar fashion. Aluminum dishes were secured in nine locations on the bottom of each tray or container and a polycarbonate membrane was placed inside each dish. A sterilization integrator strip was also placed inside each container to ensure proper sterilization conditions were met. For rigid containers, the lids were placed onto the container's bottom, latches closed, and a tamper-evident lock secured. For sterilization wrap, the standard envelope method was used on two of the three wraps tested. The third type, a uniquely designed sterilization wrap, was folded according to the manufacturer's instructions for use. All test packages were then placed in sterility maintenance covers and transported to Bay Medical Center in Panama City, Florida. All packages were sterilized using a standard steam sterilization cycle, four-minute pre-vacuum cycle at 270 degrees Fahrenheit. This was followed by a 30-minute drying period. Once the cycle was complete, the autoclave door was cracked and the packages were allowed to cool down for 30 minutes while still in the autoclave. They were then moved to a cooling rack for an additional 30-minute cool-down period. Once cooled to the touch, they were placed in new sterility maintenance covers and transported back to the ARA facility. In the ARA lab, sterilized packages with membranes were removed from their sterility maintenance covers and placed in the bioaerosol test chamber. Eight packages were tested at a time, rotating position between tests so that packaging types were tested in all eight locations within the chamber. Frozen bacteria were thawed, diluted in water, and placed in a sprayer. The sprayer was then connected to the test system and aerosolized bacteria were sprayed inside the chamber. The test bacteria used for this study is called Micrococcus luteus. These bacteria are non-pathogenic and can commonly be found in dust, water, air, and human skin. A single Micrococcus luteus bacterium is approximately one micron, similar in size to pathogenic bacteria commonly found in healthcare settings like MRSA, VRE, E. coli, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Once the air inside the chamber was contaminated, a computer program controlled the chamber and its pressure changes. It took just over an hour for the packages to experience eight vacuum cycles, two cycles at 1 psi, three at 0.7 psi, and three at 0.4 psi. Bacteria were added throughout the test to keep the concentration of airborne bacteria at a relatively constant level. Once the test was completed, the chamber air was filtered to remove the airborne bacteria. Each container was transferred to a storage rack in a fume hood. Here, the external surfaces of the sterile packages were cleaned with antimicrobial wipes to prevent known contamination on the outside from being transferred to the inside. The ARA scientists then put on two pairs of gloves before transferring each test package to a sterile field in a biological safety cabinet. Sterile forceps and nutrient auger plates were then placed in the hood with the test package. Each membrane inside the test package was picked up with sterile forceps and placed on a nutrient auger plate. A new pair of sterile forceps was used for each membrane. The membranes allow bacteria that may be present to interact with the nutrients in the auger. The membranes were incubated for 48 to 72 hours at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Micrococcus luteus, found on only the membrane without any other types of bacteria present, indicated the contamination occurred during the bioaerosol test. What did the study find? Among the 111 rigid containers tested, 87% had internal bacterial contamination. Of the 161 wrapped trays, no internal bacterial contamination occurred. 
Additionally, when comparing the durations of use for the rigid containers, it was found that the level of contamination increased over time in use. However, it should be noted, even unused containers failed. The results of this study showed that under these test conditions, Halyard Health sterilization wrap performed significantly better than the rigid containers obtained from the in-use inventories of multiple hospitals. The data suggests that just because a rigid container is sterilized, it does not ensure its contents will remain sterile until the point of use.